but according to myself. Oops. Do, do you see my screen? I see yeah. the screen very well, yeah. Okay. So shall I start introducing you? I I think it's time, right? Yes, you can start. Yeah. Please, Jörg. To my cell phone. So, yeah, welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to have Friedrich Wagemann with us today, um, giving a talk. Yeah, Friedrich is an expert in cohomology and many other things, but today's talk will be about cohomology. Yeah, about the joint cohomology of semi-direct products of Lie algebras. Please immediately go ahead, Friedrich. Thank you very much, Jörg. And thanks the organizers for the um, opportunity to, to speak in this seminar. And I must apologize to those who heard already part of the talk in Lisbon last year. But um, OK, uh, I will speak about some new developments in the end. OK, my talk is joint work with uh, Dietrich Bode from the University of Vienna in Austria. And our starting point is um, a conjecture of Temura's Pirashvili. And uh, so first of all, we will talk about this. Uh, I will talk about this conjecture. Unfortunately, we are not ready yet to, to prove it. But from these considerations, about the conjecture, we um, uh, finally came up with a program to compute uh, the cohomology of uh, Lie algebras, which are semi-direct products of a semi-simple or even simple Lie algebra and a module. Yeah, and uh, so. This is what I um, understand by computing cohomology via representation theory, because the representation theory of the module comes into um, these uh, cohomology computations. OK, and so the, the points one to four are the subject of our article, already published article. Uh, together with Dietrich Bode in 2023. And the, the fifth point is uh, about new computations, which uh, will hopefully uh, somehow someday become uh, another art. OK, let me start with Pirashvili's conjecture. So um, it is a conjecture about uh, at least one lecture of the conjecture is um, about finite dimensional complex Lie algebras. And the conjecture states that um, a finite dimensional complex Lie algebra is semi simple if and only if the H1 with trivial coefficients is zero and all the Hn with adjoint coefficients are zero. So it is a um, cohomological characterization of semi-simple Lie algebras. Unfortunately, it's conjectural for the moment. Um, and so in, in the remark... Uh, I, don't know, the gap. <laughs> okay. Um, in the remark below, I, I um, explained to you um, what these... Uh, cohomological conditions mean. H1 with trivial co coefficients being zero means that G is equal to its uh, commutator subalgebra. H0 with adjoint coefficients zero means that the center is zero. And H1 means that all derivations are inner. And H2 that uh, uh, G is algebraically rigid. This implies geometrically rigid, but is not equivalent. And so uh, Pirashvili's conjecture was originally stated in terms of Leibniz homology, but it boils down to this statement in uh, ordinary chevalier einberg homology. OK, and uh, just uh, because I'm a cohomology guy, I, I have two slides where I 
um, recall um, chevalier Einberg cohomology of a Lie algebra to you. So when you have a Lie algebra G and a, a G module M, then you then you have a space of co-chains. These are the, the the linear maps from the exterior products of G with values in the module. And uh, on these spaces of code chains, you have a co-boundary operator, which uh, is defined as uh, these uh, sum of sums. Yeah, there's one sum um, with the, the module action uh, coming in and one sum with a, with a bracket. Yeah, so it, it's depending uh, on the bracket structure of the Lie algebra and on the module structure uh, of M. And uh, so this uh, co-boundary operator satisfies D squared equals to zero and thus the, the image of D is contained in the kernel of the next D and uh, the cohomology spaces are then the, the chevalier einberg lie algebra cohomology spaces of G with values in M. And so to come back to the uh, to the to these interpretations for the Pirashvili conjecture, the, the, uh, I have uh, these examples here. The first um, uh, co-boundary operator going from C1 to C2 is uh, with trivial values is given just given by the bracket and so uh, the H1 is just linear forms on the Lie algebra which vanish on the bracket and uh, so uh, H1 being to equal to zero means that G is equal to its commutator subalgebra and so the zeros co-boundary operator goes from, yeah, with adjoint coefficients, uh, goes from G to, to one co-chains and uh, is just given by the action. And here for adjoint coefficients, the, actions, the action is given by the bracket. Thus the H zero is just the center. And uh yeah uh for for the um, uh, first co-boundary operator with adjoint coefficients one it can easily see that the h1 is derivations divided by inner derivations yeah so outer derivations if you want to and uh, what is very important for us for the um for for the sequel is that we we need uh, to know what uh, it means for uh, Lie algebra to be unimodular. This means that the traces of all these adjoint operators at x given by the bracketing by x are zero for all x in, in G. And this is, for example, the case if h1 of G C is equal to zero, because in this case, um, G is equal to the commutator subalgebra. And so this little x here can be written as a sum of commutators. Yeah? But uh, add is a morphism of Lie algebra. So this makes it the trace of a sum of commutators of add. Yeah, and, and the trace of um, a commutator is zero, thus. Um, in case H1 is zero, the Lie algebra is unimodular. Okay, now, uh, what do we know about Pirashvili's conjecture? Um, rather little things, but it is connected to another subject which, which was very important in the 1990s. Um, it was... Um, 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 oh, I forgot his name. Um, a famous Dijon mathematician um, uh, asking the question whether there are Lie algebras which are not semi simple and which have H1 with trivial coefficients equal to zero, H0 
with agile coefficient zero and H1 with agile coefficient zero. Uh, Flato, Moshe Flato, oh, I'm sorry, Moshe Flato asked this questions, question, and um, there were answers given by Angelopoulos in 1988 and Saeed Benayadi in 1996. And uh, they constructed examples which are not semi simple, but which satisfy these conditions. And for the to up to today, uh, to my knowledge, uh, Benayadi's example is the smallest one. And uh, in this uh, line of thought, um, there is a recent paper, very interesting paper by Garcia, Pulido, and Salgado, who show that if you suppose that the Levy subalgebra is simple, not only semi simple, but simple, then uh, Benayadi's example is indeed the smallest example. Yeah. So there is still work, some work to do in in order to make it um, uh, available to to all these sympathetic uh, Lie algebras. But um, uh, Garcia, Pulido, and Salgado came very close to it. All right. Okay. Now let me come back to our contribution, Dietrich's and mine, contribution to uh, to an approach to the Pirashvili conjecture. First of all, let us um, uh, observe something which is very uh, well known for sympathetic Lie algebras. Um, for sympathetic Lie algebras, when you have an abelian radical, then you must be semi simple. Yeah? And uh, so there's a, a standard method of proof of it. Um, the, when you have the Levy decomposition of, of a Lie algebra, of a finite dimensional complex Lie algebra, then uh, this means that G is a semi direct product of this Levy subalgebra S and the radical. Yeah? And, and so the semi direct product bracket is of this kind here. And so there's a possibility to, to define a derivation on G by putting it equal to zero on the Levy subalgebra and equal to the identity on the radical. And then uh, it is a uh, very uh, easy computation to show that it is indeed a derivation. And this is what I did here. But if the Lie algebra is sympathetic, it means that all derivations are inner. So this derivation must be an inner derivation. An inner derivation meaning a derivation of this form add x. Yeah? But g is unimodular. Yeah? So it has zero trace. Zero trace, but it is the identity on the radical, so the radical must be zero. Yeah? So um, observe that this reasoning does not work when you have uh, the bracket of u and v here in the in the second term of the semi-direct product bracket. Yeah, if you have the bracket of u and v in the second term, you would would have it uh, in all three factors here, and uh, so two times in the in the factors below, and only one time in the factor upstairs here. Yeah, so it, it needs really a uh, sympathetic Lie algebra with an abelian radical. Okay, and uh, so with Dietrich, we thought about this proof and um, I ca came up with, um, with, an, with a variant of this proof, which shows that when you have a sympathetic Lie algebra, so with uh, solvable radical N, if the central extension of this Neil potent Lie algebra N is split, then G must be semi simple. And the proof is exactly the same, meaning um, write down what it means to be um, so first the semi direct product in the Levy decomposition, and then the, the Neil potent part you can decompose in terms of this central extension. Yeah, so you have three components. Um, and 
the last component is in the center of n. And then define a derivation just by putting it equal to the identity on the center of n. Yeah. And because, because the central extension is split, you can take as a co-cycle the zero co-cycle. And this makes it possible that this um, this uh, map D, which is the projection on, on the center, is a derivation. Yeah, When you have a non-trivial co-cycle, it would not be a derivation. But thanks to the fact that the, you can take the co-cycle to be zero, it will be a derivation. And then the, the rest is exactly the same. The derivation must be inner, um, but the, uh, the Lie algebra is unimodular. So um, the center must be zero, but n is a nilpotent Lie algebra. It must have a non-trivial center. Thus, uh, G must be cynicism. Yeah. So this is kind of our contribution, our very modest contribution to, to an approach uh, towards the Pirashvili conjecture. And le let me just say some words why I think that this can be an approach to, to solve the Pirashvili conjecture. Um, the, the Pirashvili conjecture is about Lie algebras, which have lots of cohomology spaces which vanish. And here we, we have a proposition which, te which tells you um, one of these cohomology spaces is not vanishing. And it is this, uh, um, this H2 of n with with uh, value uh, with, uh, with the h2 of n over zn with value in zn yeah and so there you have a non trivial cohomology class and um i think i i didn't uh, have the time to to work this out in detail but i think that you can um uh, um transgress this two class of n over z of n with values in zn to a class, a three class of g with values in g. Yeah, this, this is the challenge. Yeah, and if you can do so, then you solve the the Pirashvili conjecture. Oh, okay. The, uh, it's still hypothetical, but um, this is what I would propose as an approach to the Piaget. Okay, uh, you see, we um, kind of uh, uh, failed to to show the Piaget conjecture together with Dietrich. And uh, so we, uh, we did some other things uh, on the positive side. And so, uh, during this uh, project, we came um, across, for example, Richardson's paper, where Richardson shows that there exists a rigid Lie algebra with non-trivial H2 with adjoint coefficients. And in this paper, he, he computes um, uh, yeah, uh, cohomology of uh, semi-direct products of SL2 with values in some modules. Yeah? And so we, we ask ourselves, uh, can we have a, a conceptual approach to, to this kind of computations? So this is um, what we call then computing cohomology with representation theory or by representation theory. So in the um, last part of the talk, I will only talk about Lie algebras, which are the semi-direct product of a finite dimensional complex uh, semi-simple Lie algebra S with an S module, finite dimensional S module, which is looked at as an abelian Lie algebra. And so in order to compute the cohomology of, of this kind of Lie algebra, we, we use the hochschild serre formula, which tells us um, that the cohomology, uh, the 
the degree n cohomology is a direct sum of tensor products of degree k and degree l cohomology such that k plus l is equal to n and it is the k cohomology of of s of the semi simple lie algebra s with trivial coefficients and the l cohomology of this trivial abelian lie algebra v with values in g and then you have to take the s invariance of it so uh, so everything boils down to to compute this second tensor factor factor here and for this we use the long exact sequence in cohomology of the abelian lie algebra v with values in v with values uh, which is a submodule of g and the quotient module g over v and then you can observe that the Submodule V is a trivial V module because it's an abelian Lie algebra, and, but the the quotient module G over V is also a trivial V module, yeah. But G is not, in general, G yeah, no, not not only in general, <laughs> G is not a trivial V module, unless V is a trivial module. Okay, and so for for the trivial Lie algebras, these cohomology spaces boil down to uh, co-chain spaces. Yeah, it's just the the linear maps, the nth cohomology of V with values in V is just linear maps of the exterior product of of V, the nth ex exterior product of V with values in V. And then when you take the the s invariance of this, then you come to s equivariant maps yeah and here the 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 representation theory comes into game yeah you have to you, you have to evaluate these uh spaces here and therefore you have to know uh the the exterior products of your module as an s module and then uh, have to know whether there's v or G over V, meaning uh, as an S module um, isomorphic to S, yeah, w whether S or V are in this uh, in the decomposition into irreducibles of this nth uh, exterior product of V. Yeah, this is kind of the challenge, and this is what I mean by computing cohomology with representation theory. Okay, uh, yes. So as we are using a long exact sequence, it is all always easy to work at one end of the long exact sequence or on the other end. Yeah. Uh, so on the on the low dimensional end, we can get uh, propositions like this. Uh, when you have a simple S module, then the H1 is equal uh, has dimension one. And uh, yeah, fr from this um, from this reasoning, which I already um, explained to you, uh, that you you are looking at these home spaces between exterior products of V with values in S on the one hand and with values in V on the other hand. Yeah, and so from this reasoning, you can have criteria whether the 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 case cohomology space is non-zero and so one criterion is here um if the k minus first exterior product of v does not contain a factor which is isomorphic to an ideal of s and uh, if the case exterior power of v does not contain a factor isomorphic to V, then the HK is uh, non-trivial. Okay, but um, so let me uh, go to the other end of the long exact sequence, meaning to not to low dimension, but to very high dimensions. And there we have um, uh, the following proposition. If G is n-dimensional now, uh, still 
um, still a semi-direct product, Lie algebra, but uh, we can even have um, nilpotent radical. And it's, it's not necessarily abelian, but nilpotent is also uh, okay with us. Then again, under uh, representation theoretical criterion, uh, if the S module N over the um, derived algebra of N does not contain the trivial S module, then HN is zero. So let me show how, how this works. We always start with the hochschild serre formula. So uh, G is n-dimensional, so the the the, um, uh, the nilpotent radical is m-dimensional, and so S is n minus m-dimensional, and so the 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 um, extremal cohomology space H n, which is of the dimension of the of the Lie algebra. Uh, in this direct sum from the hochschild serre formula, there's only one combination which can give something non-zero. And this is H n minus m of s and uh, H m of n with values in g and the s invariance of it. Yeah. So the proof is not over yet. <laughs> um, continuous here. So what we need to compute is we need to compute H m of n with values in g and the s invariance. We use the long exact sequence. The long exact sequence stops here. And um, we know that uh, hm of n with values in uh, with trivial values is one dimensional. Um, and so when we now have a trivial module yeah, the G over N is a trivial N module. Uh, then uh, it is just uh, S as an S module. Yeah. So the S invariants are zero. And this means this la very last space in the long exact sequence is zero. Now let us compute the 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 space before the space we want to, to know. And this is this HM of N with values in N and the S invariance of it. And for this, we use Poincaré duality. Yeah, And this is a very nice lemma. Uh, the lemma is when you have a unimodular Lie algebra, then the duality is here S equivariant. Yeah, this is a lemma I can suggest to you. And so then we ob obtain by, by Poincaré duality uh, just this space uh, appearing in the in the um, in the claim n over the the derived um, subalgebra of n. And so this S module does not contain the trivial module by assumption. Therefore, it is zero. The S invariants are zero. And uh, thus, these two spaces are zero. And therefore, this space in the long exact sequence must be zero. And this then gives that the HN of G with values in N is zero. OK, this is one. Uh, one uh, example of how we use here representation theory to compute homology. Um, maybe questions up to this point? OK, then um, in some cases, we can compute the whole cohomology. And so this is kind of our it's not a big theorem, but it's our main theorem of, of the paper with Dietrich. Um, uh, when we, we, we are back now to, to these uh, semi-direct product, Lie algebras. So a semi-simple Lie algebra here is even a simple Lie algebra, SLNC. And uh, a module, and as a module, we take the natural 
uh, module of dimension n. Yeah. So for example, uh, SL2, then it's uh, vectors with two components. Um, and in this case, we can compute the whole cohomology and it's just given by the cohomology of SLN with, with trivial coefficients, but which is with a shift in dimension. So let me explain the proof. And once again, the, the proof will not stop on this page, but will go on on one other page. Um, so first of all, uh, just uh, by comparison of dimensions, we can never have that the, ex the case exterior product of V is equal or isomorphic to S, yeah? because uh, these binomial coefficients can never be N squared minus one. Uh, and therefore, in uh, uh, therefore the, um, the the factor in the long exact sequence which corresponds to H K of V comma V over G, yeah, V over G is as an S module isomorphic to S. This factor is always zero, yeah, and so. Uh, we have that the um, space which is interesting to us, the HK of V with values in G and the S invariance of it is just this home space yeah, of S equivariant maps from la lambda K of V with values in V. Okay, and so on the next slide, I will explain uh, what this space gives. Whoops. So it is non-zero only for k equal to one. This is what I claim. And this is once again, a very um, nice little lemma. Uh, the lemma um, which you probably know is that uh, you have an isomorphism of lambda k with the homomorphisms of lambda n minus k, uh, comma lambda n, yeah, just by, um, the exterior product, you take a K, uh, yeah, a, a K fold exterior product and an N minus K fold exterior product, and the, you you uh, uh, multiply them together to have an N fold exterior product. Yeah. Um, so the lambda N of V as a V is N dimensional here is just C and the Lie algebra acts via the trace and thus trivially by unimodularity. Yeah? And so uh, this is then just the trivial module here. And uh, so we have here an isomorphism for isomorphism of lambda k of v with the dual of lambda n minus k of v. Yeah? And so one can ask, when is uh, this um, the natural module v of dimension n isomorphic to its dual module? And this happens only for n equal to 2, only for SL2 the two-dimensional module is uh, isomorphic to its dual, and for all the other uh, simple Lie algebras, SLN, yeah, for greater n, this is not the case. And therefore, um, the only space surviving here is the space for k equal to 1, and this makes the, the dimension shift here in the, in the result. Okay, um, some remarks about it. We, we can, with the same kind of methods, we, we can even more easily compute the cohomology with trivial coefficients. Um, and uh, one can also uh, compute Leibniz cohomology using the 
the methods uh, of uh, Pirashvili, uh, which Pirashvili showed to us in, in homology and which uh, we have uh, uh, translated into cohomology together with Jörg. Um, and then you can see, for example, that this five-dimensional Lie algebra SL2C with um, um, with a semi-direct product in, in the two-dimensional module uh, is rigid as a Lie and as a Leibniz algebra. So you can see small things like that. And um, now uh, I come to the last part of my talk. So these are results which we computed more recently together with Dietrich. And uh, so Dietrich has um, always this notation, which uh, which is maybe not so standard for for him. The 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 module V n is n dimensional. So n is not the highest weight, but the dimension of the model. Yeah. Um, and so uh, with with the same kind of methods, we, we can show uh, propositions like this when you have SL2 and uh, uh, a direct sum of uh, the module Vn, k-fold direct sum of the module Vn, then you have uh, um, an H1, which is k squared dimensional. And uh, when you have a direct sum of Vn and a Vm with n uh, and m uh, different distinct integers, then you, you have dimension two. Uh, so we did computations of this this kind, yeah. But um, so for in some sense we are we are still at the beginning, yeah. We are, we are kind of searching for for patterns in this cohomology, yeah. We we would like to have a theorem which uh, which tells us all the cohomology spaces under these and the, those uh, conditions, yeah. But um, so at the moment we are we are kind of testing and for for testing sl2 is kind of the the best uh, lie algebra we can work with the representation theory of sl3 is still very well known but um the things you can say about uh, a general simple lie algebra are maybe not enough to to compute these uh, cohomology spaces yeah so um so what we can, one of, of these patterns is, for example, we can show that when you take an even dimensional module, yeah, you take SL2, semi-direct product with an even dimensional irreducible module, uh, then the H2 is always zero. All these Lie algebras are rigid, yeah, and so, uh, in order to show this, you need the, the decomposition of lambda two of uh, this module into irreducible factors, and all the irreducible components are odd dimensional, and therefore the the spaces which always come into must be zero, and this makes the cohomology zero. Yeah. So, for example, um, one one thing we we don't know yet is what happens if we take the odd dimensional modules? Yeah. Um, all, already Richardson knew that then we, we do have a non trivial H2, and this is a non trivial H2 in his theorem, yeah, a rigid Lie algebra with a non trivial H2. Uh, but uh, we would like to, to compute it explicitly for all odd dimensional modules. And so for the moment, we, we, we have some ideas, but we, we don't know the, the general answer yet. And so at the last slide, I would like to show you that in, in some cases, uh, 
we can uh, have the whole cohomology. Yeah, we can compute the whole cohomology. Uh, we already saw uh, one instance uh, of um, uh, of that uh, for the natural module uh, and SLN. We can compute the whole cohomology. Yeah, and here is another instant um, for SL two and the three-dimensional module, we can also compute the whole cohomology by the same methods. And uh, so, um, but for the moment, we have computed only the cohomology spaces. So one, one can do many more things here. For example, one can ask uh, oneself, um, what is the bracket? Yeah, on on these cohomology spaces, you have a, a Lie bracket. H one, in fact, is a Lie algebra, and this Lie algebra H one acts on the other uh, H K. Yeah, and um, so for example, uh, here uh, it it must be the trivial Lie, trivial one dimensional Lie algebra. This Lie algebra G has a non-trivial uh, infinitesimal deformation, yeah, a unique uh, infinitesimal non-zero infinitesimal deformation, and this infinitesimal deformation, because of H three being zero, zero um, extends to a formal deformation of of this Lie algebra. But uh, so this these are some things you can say uh, just by in, uh, inspecting uh, these uh, cohomology spaces. But um, there's also an action of this one-dimensional Lie algebra on H2, on H4, and on H5. And in order to compute this, what one would need to, to uh, take real code chains and, and compute with, with the elements. And uh, so, uh, this we did not do yet. And uh, actually, this is kind of the last Lie algebra where we can compute the whole cohomology by our methods. Yeah? When we try this for the seven dimensional Lie algebra SL2C with uh, values in V4, yeah. Uh, did we try this? No, maybe we, we tried uh, only the odd dimensional one. Uh, so take the eight dimensional Lie algebra SL2 semi direct with V5. Then I come to, to some long exact sequences which I cannot where I cannot specify all the terms and uh, I. I can some, say something about the low dimensional terms, about the high dimensional terms, but in the middle there's some, there are some cohomology spaces which I which I cannot compute. And so, one one should ask, yeah, are there different methods to to compute uh, the cohomology? And uh, one method with we which we did not try yet, but which looks uh, also promising is um, the method by grad graduation. Yeah, gradation. The the Lie algebra G is a graded Lie algebra. SL two has an element H which acts by bracket on on the whole Lie algebra, and um, you you have a basis by eigenvectors. Yeah. And so, in this situation, um, the cohomology uh, is given by the subcomplex of uh, cochains of total degree zero. This is a theorem by Dimitri Fuchs, uh, theorem 1.5.2 in his book. And uh, so um, maybe this can also serve to, to compute the cohomology and go into uh, these uh, corners where we we did uh, were not be able to to conclude yet. Okay, this is everything I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much for this very interesting and clear talk. Are there any questions or comments? I don't see everybody. It's very hard for me to do this now. I think you just go ahead. You unmute yourself and go ahead because I don't see everybody on my screen. So I'm sorry. No questions, no comments. Hmm. And I have to ask a question, right? <laughs> go ahead, yeah. No, no, I um, mm -hmm. can you go one slide back, please? Yeah. I think it's one slide back because no, yeah. So for the events you did it, right? So so it's yes. really only the I I just want to make sure. So so the but, next but, but, case but, is V5, as you said correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so but, yeah, but, but uh, we, we can. Uh, this is only about the H2, yeah. Yeah, we, it's not for all. Okay, no, yeah. no, no, not for all, not for all. Okay, oh, I thought, yeah, okay, okay. So mm. even V4 would be interesting for all, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did yeah. you try this, if I may ask, or you? Um, <laughs> I, I did so many computations. I, I don't remember actually. <laughs> I, no, I, no, I, it's not a fair question. But you said something, and then you said V five all of a sudden. So I just wanted I, to yeah I, clarify. Yes, I, I think for V four, I did not try the whole cohomology. Yeah, I should. I should try that. Yeah. Your, your... No, I mean, that would be in, also in the light of this proposition, yeah, it would be interesting, yeah, what is this uh, largest one that you can do all and not just H2, right? That would be yeah, the next exactly, one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, but, but, but I, if I remember correct, yeah, yeah, I, if I remember correctly, it was V3 and not V4. Yeah. Okay, okay. Hmm. And for V3, but for V3, apparently it's not true that H2 vanishes, right? So no. for the odd case, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you cannot expect an analysis. So it's more complex, obviously more complicated for yeah. the odd dimension, right? As yes. you mentioned, of course, yeah. Y yes, okay. and, and uh, the, the H2 is non-zero. This is the non-zero H2, which Richardson used. Yeah, yeah, you said it also, yeah. Yeah, I don't re remember this paper at the moment, but you mentioned it, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a very nice paper. I know, but I don't remember the details at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, no. Yeah. I yeah, have a small remark. I'm just back yeah. from teaching. Sorry, I'm so late. Ah. Yeah. Uh, but, <clears throat> but to the question about SL2 and V4, I can answer it. Mm -hmm. Because in low dimensions, of course, uh, there's a distinction how to compute by by theory and uh, long exact cohomology sequence or just by computer. And of course, this is still computable just by computer. So we know the answer for SL2 and V4, or I know it at least, because you just can ask the computer, which will not be possible in general, of course. Yeah, But for low dimensions, and by low, I mean something like dimension at most 20, uh, maybe, uh, maybe only 15, I don't know, some depends on your computer power uh, you can do it directly but, but but do you do you speak about h2 or about the whole uh, the whole okay. you can compute them all okay, yeah? okay. but is there a pattern very soon and is there a pattern somehow i mean especially for the odd ones do you do, do you see a pattern there if i may ask this we or, would like to see a pattern yeah, yeah. <laughs> So no, uh, the problem is uh, for for a pattern you need really a bit more information, and that's uh, okay. not really feasible. Only for H two I see a pattern, but not for the whole cohomology. Okay, and and if I may ask, what is the pattern for H two? I'm sorry. <laughs> the pattern is very easy for the even dimensional irreducible modules in the. Thing it's it's always zero that we know. Yes, and for the and odd, for the odd ones, the pattern is that the result is always one dimension. Okay, it's called that was my question exactly. Yeah, so it stays one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but we, yeah. we don't have Con a conjecture. 
this is a contract. <laughs> yeah, but but the, the, uh, I mean, what what you did compute with the computer confirms this conjecture. That was yes. the question. Yes, right. yes. That yes. was the question, of course. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? If this is not the case, let us uh, thank Friedrich again. Thank you. Yeah, very nice, Friedrich. Thank you. That was my comment. <laughs> yeah.